With the first pick. Lawrence in a foot race. Will they catch him? Touchdown, Tigers! The Jacksonville Jaguars select Lawrence. Back left corner of the end zone for Amari Rodgers, and they do it again. Another Clemson touchdown. Welcome into the Trevor Cast on 1010XL, brought to you by our good friends at Claude Nolan Cadillac, beginning lasting relationships since 1905. It's our weekly journey through the world of all things Trevor Lawrence, the presumptive number one pick of the Jacksonville Jaguars, and it's time for the home run hitter now, Hayes. We've got Clemson coach Dabo Sweeney, and I've heard Dabo talk about Trevor for three years. I've sat in his office and talked to him about Trevor. He never went this deep about Trevor. This is just fascinating stuff about Trevor, both on and off the field. And I think it's going to give every fan in this city a a unique window in what's going to happen when this guy arrives after they draft him. Matt, such a fun interview. Uh, So much insight from Dabo Swinney. Great job setting it up for us. And um, yeah, yeah, there was so many takeaways. Uh, But my favorite part, as as you'll hear in the interview coming up, is when Davo starts talking about the combination of Trevor and Urban Meyer, yeah, yeah, and what that's going to lead to, and what he's <laughs> betting on. So, uh, so yeah, but it, it was it was so much fun. And again, what we're seeing is what has been a common theme throughout with Trevor Lawrence, uh, grounded in faith, but with a combination of passion, driven, committed to excellence, and that has formed what appears to be the perfect prospect. Yeah, and it's it's interesting because D- Dabo goes deep on the idea of look, he's known since ninth grade. He's going to be everybody's been telling him you're going to be the first pick in the draft, and he's dealt with that pressure and those expectations. Has an unprecedented high school career, goes to Clemson, wins a national championship right out of the gate, continues to get better every year in the playoff three years, um, and, and and now you're at the point where okay, it's here, it's now finally arrived, and after all of that, he has not cracked at all. At all, not even a little bit. It's remarkable. I mean, it really is the fact that um, there, there. I, I, I haven't heard anybody say anything negatively about him, and not just in this. I mean, in the course of the draft process, right. where I mean, you are just bound to get prodded and and poked at, and in terms of your, you know, everything, right? And the, the the worst thing that's happened to Trevor Lawrence is Chris Sims said he takes Zach Wilson over him. That's been the worst thing that's happened to Trevor Lawrence <laughs> in the draft process. Right, and again, I right. think it just speaks to um, what just a, a sound player in person he is. And again, to you know, hear Dabo Swinney say that look, his skill set's going to translate day one. But his mindset's going to translate day one as well. When he walks in the building at TIA Bank Field as a Jaguar, from day one, all the stuff that you need to translate will have translated. He'll have to learn the offense, and he'll have to get used to building chemistry with his teammates. But 90% of the battle will be won because of how Trevor Lawrence is as a player and a person. Right. All right, let's get into Dabba Sweeney. Just some fascinating stuff here. Welcome in National Championship Coach Dabo Sweeney of Clemson to the Trevor Cast. Dabo, thanks so much for being so gracious with your time. Uh, good to be with you guys. Hope you're doing well. We are. Okay. Everybody's excited here, Dabo. It's all about Trevor. Uh, so listen, so talking ball with you is always fun, but talking life takes it to another level. So I'm going to kind of frame this in that vein. So how does a young man who has been told since he was in ninth grade that he's going to be the first pick in the NFL draft, who leads his high school to unprecedented success – who goes to college, wins a national title in his freshman season, who gets better and better every season at the most demanding position on the field. How does he not crumble, Dabo, away from the field under the pressure of all that? Well, it, he's just he's just got a great uh, team around him, a lot of good people, a uh, wonderful family uh, and support system there. He's incredibly uh, grounded in his faith, uh, very strong in his faith. That really is what guides him. Uh, so he's just, he's just not, he's just not overwhelmed by any of that. And it's just as normal, you know, I mean, on the outside looking in, you, you kind of see all these things and all these expectations. And literally since the ninth grade, he's, he's had, you know, he beat out a senior, uh, who, uh, who actually 
was moved from quarterback to tight end and was the starting tight end at Alabama this year, but he beat out a senior as a 14 year old ninth grader. And, uh, you know, and, 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 and he's expected to win every week. He's, he, you go through the high school career, the 11, the, the lead 11, so all that stuff, you know, number one player. And you're supposed to go win a job as a freshman. He does. You're supposed to lead him to a national championship. He does. You're supposed to, you know, never lose. And he hardly does. I think he lost two games his whole career here. And, He's tough. Uh, and then, you know, he just never gets distracted. Uh, and so, again, I, I just credit that to uh, his humility, the way he's wired, uh, his faith. And, uh, and he just keeps his life simple. I mean, he's a very simple kid, uh, but he's passionate, man. He is a passionate and driven and committed uh, young person to being excellent. I mean, that's just the, how he goes about. He's just that he's just driven that way. And, um, you know, he, he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't get distracted by stuff that, that really is going to take him away from being the best he can be. He really truly loves preparing. He loves training. He loves challenging himself. He loves to compete. Yeah. He's a great teammate. And, uh, like I said, very simple, you know, he looks like Hollywood, but he's so, on Hollywood. Right. Uh, and, uh, you know, that has served him well. And I think that's been the biggest thing is, and then just, it's just normal to him. Uh, you know, it's, it's not something that's just come. It's been, it's been, uh, you know, his norm every single day. Uh, he's always been in the spotlight. He's always had these expectations and, uh, you know, he just, he's just refused to let those things define him. It's been more about, his work ethic, his character, his belief in himself, uh, his commitment and those things. That's what he is focused on. So kind of an inside out approach. Dad, was there ever been a time we had to sit him down and say, all right, we might have to like, we might have to pull back a little bit. This is all a lot for him at this point. Not really. No. I mean, you know, I mean, he just gets it. And uh, from, from the very, you know, he committed as a junior in high school, never asked me about another player on the roster as far as – I mean, we had all kind of quarterbacks at that time, guys in front of him committed, never never worried about it. You know, like I said, he's just a very uh, faith-driven young man. He's, he just married his middle school sweetheart. Uh, he's been – he and Marissa have been together since middle school. And, uh, you know, he just, he just keeps it simple, knows who he is. He's got thick skin. Obviously, there's a lot of criticism – that comes with, uh, you know, his position and certainly being in the spotlight and, and those type of things. And he's just, he just isn't affected by that or the praise, uh, to him. He just, he, he just focused on what's real and, uh, and, and that's in the things that he controls and that's his preparation. It's his mentality, his work ethic, uh, his decision making. And, uh, you know, he's just a, he's just been a joy to be around. He really has been. And he's the same guy every single day. He is the same guy. Deb, but what's he like in practice? What's his demeanor uh, during game week? Incredibly focused. Uh, I mean, you know, he shows up on Monday, uh, you know, the, whatever happened in the previous game, it's, it's over. I mean, it's on to the next one. He loves, he loves to prepare He's always uh, ahead of the game. You know, he does a lot of work on his own, always has done that. He, he, he stays after practice. I, I, I never can remember a practice being over that he didn't stay after practice and work on something on his own or grab one of the guys. That's just, you know, he's not a guy that soon as, you know, we break the huddle, he's off the field. I mean, he's just, just, he loves it. He loves every part of it, but incredibly competitive. You know, we do a lot of good on good here. And, uh, you know, so every single day he gets challenged and he, he loves to compete. He competes against himself, wants to complete every pass. Uh, and, uh, you know, he, he's, if he makes a mistake, uh, he, he processes it right then and there, understands it. And, um, you know, just, just brings it every day. He's the same guy. And uh, that's why he's so consistent in everything he does. Great student, graduated in three years, uh, just incredibly committed in all areas. So, Dab, I heard once told me that in the NFL, everybody has talent. They're the elite of their profession. But he said the players who sustain, who play 8, 10, 12 or more years in the league are the players whose football IQ is elite. And, and he said they constantly ask why to get better. Is Trevor one of those why guys? 
Oh yeah, no no question. Oh yeah, he he's he wants to know. Uh, he's you know not just a guy you just draw up the play and say this is what we're going to do. He he really wants to understand you know the why and and how how it's all you know coordinated and <clears throat> understanding the defense. You know what why they're doing certain things. Uh, uh, he, he loves it. I mean, he is a true student of the game. You know, he, he's got he's got superstar talent. Uh, there's a lot of people who have superstar talent, right? Uh, but but it's the work ethic and the character, the commitment, the discipline. Those are the things that that separate people. And uh, you know, he's he's above and beyond in all those areas. Debo, what's been your advice to to Urban Meyer in terms of building this relationship now with Trevor and and whether it's allowing him to have input in how the offense will be built or just it, it, what's what's been those conversations uh, in terms of Urban now uh, taking over uh, the role of of coaching Trevor? Oh man, just enjoy it. You know, Trevor's Trevor's he's not coming in there to to tell them what to do. I mean, he's gonna, he's going to come in and he's he's going to go to work, but. Just put a good group. Just put good people around him. You know, uh, you know, biggest thing with Urban. I mean, you don't have to worry about that. He's going to hire a great staff. Uh, Urban's a winner, and and Trevor's a winner, and and they're both incredibly competitive. And that'll be a. I think it'll be a great, a great fit. You know, I don't know how many games they're going to be predicted to win. It's going to be a tough challenge, but I'll I'll I'll, I'll take the over. I'll tell you that. Uh, <laughs> put put me down for the over. Uh, Right now, because uh, because you, you know you got two competitive people that 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 want to win and uh, and have a history of winning, so I think that's a pretty good deal. But I think the biggest thing is just uh, putting the right pieces in place, you know, to support him. Obviously, he can't do it by himself, so you know, uh, there's he's got a skill set that's going to translate day one. He's got a mentality and a mindset that's going to translate day one. Incredible football IQ. Um, uh, biggest thing I've told Urban is, is, man, you're going to enjoy this. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's rare that you get an opportunity to, to coach a guy like this. And, um, uh, it's going to be fun to watch. Yeah, but when do you start talking NFL with your players or, or do you during their careers? And when did you start with Trevor? Oh, you know, I mean, you, you, you talk, I mean, heck you talk NFL with these guys uh, nowadays, even in the recruiting process, um, you know, at a place like Clemson, because you know the the type of kids we're recruiting, they all have aspirations of playing at the next level. So I think the biggest thing is, you know, uh, very early in our process, we talk about you know uh, a path, and if this is something you want to do, well, well, here's here's you know, there's no guarantees for that. Right. Uh, so make sure you maximize your opportunity now. You know, you can't be a you're not going to the NFL if you're not a great college player. So you better focus on becoming a great college football player. And, and you know, to be a great college player, you've got to be a good student and you've got to, you know, buy in all the, those things that, that go into that. And, and uh, so, you know, just trying to just be great where your feet are, man, having a mentality of enjoying your journey and not, not worrying about all those things. Uh, it's a developmental game and, Okay. Hey, here's where you want to be. Well, here's what we got to do. You know, what we got to do strength conditioning wise, what we got to do football knowledge wise, what we got to do performance wise, you name it. So, you know, you have conversations with guys, you know, early on, but then as you go through a a career, you know, you, you, you can, uh, you know, see who really has uh, that opportunity. Uh, You know, only, only 1.7% of college players play in the NFL. Right. Right. So I think the big thing for us as college coaches is making sure that these guys, you know, if that's something you want to do, well, and you know that so few get the opportunity, well, you, but you're going to need every edge you can get and everything counts um, and, uh, and how you go about handling your business. So trying to nurture that and help them, but also help them understand that, listen, you know, football is going to end and we, 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 we can't wait till football ends to have a plan and to, and to be prepared for life. So that's all part of our process here, but certainly with Trevor, you know, we knew early on that, that, you know, he was, he was going to be here three years and, uh, but let's prepare yourself. Let's don't just be here three years, check a box and go to the NFL. Let's, let's go be the number one pick 
And so how do we do that? All right. And, and so here's where we got to get better. Here's where we got to develop. So and then it's buying in. It's attacking those things, staying focused on ex- where, where you are in that journey. Uh, and, uh, you know, so many guys, they get distracted by, you know, it, that's why I always laugh. You know, sometimes you have guys that, like their senior years over and they want to go train and they're going to really train and really get serious about their nutrition and really study and really get. And I'm like, well, <laughs> well why are you waiting until then to do that? Right. Like, well, I mean, let's let's do that like now. Uh, if that's something you want to do, let's start let's start having that mentality now as a freshman, as a sophomore. And and so when you get to that point, it's just a lifestyle. It's not something you got to go do. Uh, so I think just, again, uh, you know, having that that daily commitment and that daily focus, uh, loving the grind, you know, loving being coached, uh, loving just all of it. And that's what I can honestly say about Trevor. I mean, he loved being a freshman. He loved spring practice. He loved fall camp. You know, he, he, this guy fought to play this past year, you know, of, of all the people out there, he, he didn't have to play a snap. And I mean, he's out there, you know, creating hashtags and leading the charge. Like, let's go play. And I love that. I mean, this guy loves to play. He loves to prepare. He loves to compete. And he truly enjoyed being a college student, you know, and, and it's just, and it's just, that's a cool thing to see. And he was the same way in high school. That's why he committed December of his junior year and recruiting was over because he didn't want to mess with it. He just wanted to enjoy being a high school kid. He wanted to enjoy, you know, playing quarterback for Cartersville. And, uh, and that's the same way he'll be at this next level. There'll be a lot more that'll come with it, obviously. Um, but man, he'll be so committed to being great at Jacksonville. Um, if, if that's where he ends up, uh, certainly appears to be that way, but you never know till, till somebody calls his name. So, uh, but, but he will be so committed to being the very best, uh, NFL quarterback that he can possibly be. And that's all you can ask for. No question. Dabo, I, Trevor is so grounded in his faith and with that combination of being so passionate and to, to driven to excellence, how has that helped him grow as a leader? Oh man. Uh, you know, just, it's been awesome. You know, he came in here as a freshman and, um, just trying to kind of put his head down, go to work and go compete. And then he wins a job and then it's, you know, uh, kind of trying to work to become the leader of an offense. And then it's okay. Now let's become the leader of a team. And then it's this year, okay, let's become a leader in college football, you know, a leader in the community and so forth. And it's been awesome to see him mature in all those areas. Uh, and, and again, his, I think being grounded in his faith is, has, has uh, driven him and uh, helped direct his steps as he's gone about that. But it's been great to watch that growth uh, in him as a young man and, and uh, you know, to the point now where, you know, he knows what he wants. Uh, and, uh, you know, excited to be at his wedding last weekend and, and, you know, he's going to, he'll be a leader the day he gets there. He knows what the expectations are. He loves that. Uh, and leadership comes natural to him. It's not really something that he has to work at. It's a very natural thing. Uh, it's natural to the position, uh, that's for sure. But, but it's also natural to him as a person, uh, people gravitate to him. He's got a great presence. Uh, he's a very comforting spirit and, uh, but he is ultra competitive, man. And, uh, you know, he, he, everybody will see that early on. That's a perfect way to end it. Dabba, thanks so much for being so generous with your time. We really appreciate the insights. You got it. All right. Good luck. Good luck. Thanks, Dabba. Thank you. You're listening to the 1010XL Trevor Cast, brought to you by our friends at Claude Nolan Cadillac, beginning lasting relationships since 1905. Wow. How about that? Unbelievable. How about that? And again, we want to thank Claude Nolan Cadillac, beginning lasting relationships since 1905, for bringing these special interviews to you. But boy, how about Davos? I- I'll Sweeney. take the over as well. That's- I'm with Davo. <laughs> Give me the over He's, on when. I, I have again. I have never heard him go that deep on Trevor, and, and just explain who and what he's all about. And boy, if you are a Jags fan, and you heard those fifteen minutes, you got to be thinking, "My God, we're going to the playoffs." 
I mean, you you literally got to be thinking this is the best thing that has ever happened to this franchise. Oh, I don't think there's any doubt about that. Um, I mean, now that's a low bar, um, you know, it's, considering the other considering, franchises right, right. over the last twenty five <laughs> right, years. Right. But um, but yeah, I mean, I I think it's, I think it's it's also really cool to hear Dabo Swinney talk about you know conversations with Urban Meyer and saying, what else can you say other than. Man, you are going to really enjoy this. Right, enjoy it, man. And, and that's why Urban Meyer's here. I mean, again, if, if you need uh, any other endorsement as to why people believe Trevor Lawrence will be brilliant, right. Urban Meyer could have done anything with his life. Could have coached anywhere, could have stayed out of it. Urban Meyer is coaching the Jacksonville Jaguars because the Jets were stupid enough to win two games late in the season and hand the Jaguars Trevor Lawrence. Right. I mean, think of that. I mean, it just, it's amazing. And, and I think Dabo Swinney's dead on. I think Urban Meyer knows what Dabo is telling him, which is this is going to be an, an experience that might end up being the most rewarding and enjoyable of your life because you have quarterbacks solved and you don't have to worry right. about in three years this guy leaving for another level of football. This is it. This is your guy. You know what you do in three years with Trevor Lawrence? You make him the highest paid player in the NFL. That's what you do in three. That's all you've got to do. That's exactly what you do. And, and he's your quarterback for the rest of your that's career. That's your obstacle. That's, that's it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and you've got an owner that would love to write that right, check. Right, right. So, I mean, it's if you're Urban Meyer, it's uh, and if you're a Jaguar fan, it's uh, it's great times ahead, it appears. You know, we've gone through nine pods this, and I, I can't help but continue to think back to, you know, had the Jets not lost... You might even be in a situation where not only do you have the second pick, but you either have the same GM and the same coach or one or one or the other got got fired. You still have remnants from what happened before, and you're trying to make a decision on who the other four you're going to take, mm-hmm. and none of those guys are clean. And you wouldn't have Urban Meyer. No. No, that's I what I'm saying. I can tell you that, yeah. No way I mean, you have Urban Meyer. Yeah. You, you probably have both the guys from before. Or you'd have Robert Sala. And right. he may be great. Right. I mean, he may end up being great. But- I'm going to take my chances that Urban Meyer is going to be better than Robert Sala in the NFL. Right. And again, better than it. That's not a knock on Sala, who's a great guy who right. used to work here. But any of the guys that got hired Track in this record, cycle. Man. Dan Campbell, right. a guy that's talking about biting off kneecaps, is going to be better in the NFL than Urban Meyer? I just I don't see it. So, I mean, it, it really it does make you go back and, and think about, because we believed for so long that it was going to be the second pick. We knew the Jaguars weren't going to win again. I mean, they, 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 that became pretty clear, you know, 12 weeks in. Uh, but the Jets just did not look like they would yeah. beat anybody. Yeah. And so it's like, here we go, typical Jaguars. Uh, they're going to go 1-15, in 15, and it's not going to be enough to land Trevor Lawrence because the Jaguars or the Jets are going to go winless. And it is a, it's just a, a stunning break of good fortune, it appears, in how it played out, and now the Jaguars get Trevor Lawrence, and other people have to worry about should we, we take we Zach Wilson or Justin Fields or Mac day. Jones or yeah. Every day it'd be a different different. No, I oh, think it's going to be this guy now. Yeah, no, oh, I think it's going to be that guy now. I, I think in terms of our station, yeah, I, I think everybody would. I think there would have been a, there would have been camps on all sides. I think you may have even had a Lance camp. <laughs> I mean, who knows? Right. But I, you definitely would have had a Wilson, a Fields, and a Mac Jones camp. Right, right. I don't think there's any question. And then, you know, so, I mean, it's just so nice that all of that went away. When Frank Gore got that first down and the Jets upset the Rams and then they turned around and upset the Browns. And, uh, it, it, again, when you, when you hear Dabo Swinney talk about Trevor Lawrence, it just reinforces how lucky we believe the Jaguars were that all of this lined up. And frankly, we deserve it. We've gone through so much. These fans have gone through so much that they deserve to go into that stadium and watch Trevor Lawrence shred teams for the next 20 years. <laughs> all right, we want to thank our friends at Claude Nolan Cadillac. Beginning, lasting relationships since 1905 for continuing to bring the Trevor cast your way. We're now nine down, one to go. One left. One to go. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Uh, but one more, one more. They'll run draft day. How about right, that? Right, And when you're listening to the, to the last drop, it will literally be time to hear the Jacksonville Jaguars select. That's right. 